Right, it's 2010 and this is Sheila doing another Burwell tape which was um, from 2005 and our visit to Suffolk and Cambridgeshire. Um, so this is tape 2, cassette 5, um, side 1 of the tape 2, cassette 5 of the Burwell visit. So here we go. Tape 2 of Burwell Cemetery on the 5th of July 2005. Come back and get another tape. We've been inside the church. We found Masons. I can't remember if we found an Isaacson. Now I've got a lot muddled up. I don't know if we have or not. But we've found. Yes, we have found Isaacsons. Oh, yeah, because the Isaacsons are very prominent inside the church with plaques. So it's just a reminder of what we've done on the other tape. We're going back to a big plot of Masons now including three children who died, well, in their 20s, and one who was 12, very close together, so we think possibly could they have died in the fire? Because I should find that out. Oh, right, well, no, they couldn't have died in the fire then. But anyway, there could have been, there was cholera about, there was all sorts of smallpox, there was lots of awful diseases around at this time. Got on. Elizabeth Mary, daughter of Thomas and Anne Webb, who died April 1802, aged 40. Um, lots of unlike, difficult ones to see. So Henry Mingay, who died November 8, 1878, 67th year, and his wife Mary, who died November 23rd, 1878, 66th year. Also Eliza. W, wife of Henry Mingay. We had two wives by the look of it who died June the 27th, 1829. We've got Mary Sharp, this is very clear, I think somebody's come and done this one up, who died 30th of December 1809, age 38. It's an old one, but it's been done up, I think. Also some Paul family, John Paul and Sarah Paul. Died 1785, age 71, and 1780. And John Paul and Sarah's wife, who died March, he died March 1815. She died November 1811, age 6. He was 67, she was 90. And some more Masons we got in loving memory of Henry Mason, who departed his life. January the 5th, 1873, age 46. Also, Elizabeth Martin Mason. I, mean, I thought it was Martin. Daughter of the above, who departed this life January the 4th, 1895, age 44. And next to them, we got James Mason, who died October the 31st, 1873, age 44. And his wife, Elizabeth who died July the 17th, 1921, aged 91. Then we got George Mason, son of George and Jew, oh, oh, and Elizabeth, is it Elizabeth? Mason, who died December 1862, aged, I think it's 27, it's a two, 29. So that's George who died in 18, it could be 62, it could be 02. It might not be Elizabeth, but... Home for the Mason plot. Uh, another pathway coming into the church of Joseph Mason. Joseph Mason, eight, who died 18-something or other. It's not very clear, this one. And then we've got... I think this is a Mason next to it. Not sure. Yeah, it's right. See, M A S. -A. Oh, right. So, what is Jane, wife of Joseph Mason, who died? She was age 100. No, age 60, sorry. Who died in. That could be 1811 or something like that. Of the Masons on this side of the church, You've got John Cook, passed away August the seventh, nineteen forty, age seventy-one. Mm. 
the newish one, well not new, it's quite a while back, but Elizabeth Ship with the double P, who died 21st of April 1945, aged 74. Also, Harry Ship, husband of the above, who died 11th of October 1960, aged 87. Oh, right, so they're quite, Harry. yeah. It's definitely Mason country. All the Isaacsons seem to be buried inside the church. Masons are outside. We've got some stones, we've got some more stones of them. It's back of the church where there's another entrance and the, the side where there's just another clock has got a different time on it, that side's not working. By the door you've got James Norman who died February the 28th, 1817, aged 62, and Anne who died 1865, aged 78, and William be their son, child, yeah. Um, William, oh, I'm not quite sure that is, wanting to go to the loo, but it's not easy around here. Found some frosts, but they're like 1940s. Um, Grangers, they pop up now and again, different places. And Carters, they seem to pop up as well, but these are the 1950s. There's a James Blackwell, this is right in the corner, right in the far corner of the church on its own. We've got um, James Blackwell, died July the 17th, 1953, age 84. So he was around at the turn of the century. We've done the whole church now, we might not have done these up here. Oh, we're right behind the tower now, and I'm desperate to go to the toilet. Bladder has filled right up, can't even think of a drink even though I'm thirsty. Around the church we've got Mary Palmer who died the 17th of something, 1700, aged 80. So we've got palmers, they seem to crop up everywhere. Some browns as well. There's um, Brown, with an E on the end. Could be Frank Brown, who died November, or Brown, 1780, and his wife as well in there. Then, uh, oh yeah, France, what could be Francis Brown, September, 1707, and John Brown, their son, who died September 1777, aged, so I think it's three months, or one, or one year and three months, or something like that. Towards this tree, I'm not sure, sure what sort it is. It's not an oak, it's not a conker tree, it's some other sort of tree, but I don't know what it is. The other little one is Rob Beals, who died the 12th of January, 1763. I'm putting these down because they are old. They might come in useful. It's like an old school here by the church. Lots of writing on there. Now we're Montessori school. There is a Burwell castle, but because we're bursting, we might have to leave that sort of thing for another time. Because um, we need other, we've got other places to go this afternoon while the weather's keeping up. But I'm really happy with what we found. Although we've still got to sort the links out with the Masons yet. Um, I think there's enough in there to give us lots to go on. But we're sat in a pub, outside a pub. I can't remember what it's called, we'll have to look on the way out. This is a little break after going around the churchyard. Just decide where we're going next. Right, we're just leaving now the Crown at Burwell. We're going towards, we're going to find Wesley Waterless and Wood Ditton, where we know there's Masons and Zora's got other links. It's been a fruitful morning, we've got loads to talk about and we're off now. We've driven through Burwell just to have a look. We found, um, we've come to a, like a dead end, which leads to a place called Broad's Farm, which might have relevance to something in the past. And there was something called Burwell House, which could be uh, like an old manor house. And we're turning around now and going back through Burwell. Yeah, it's good. Here at near Broadwell Farm, we've got the sewage works. And I can see them actually working. The spray's coming out, breaking down the pieces. All right, we're now at a place. It's on... Um, we're at Wesley Water Waterless. It's a little tiny church in the middle of nowhere near a farm. 
there's a um, a building called Westley Hall next to it, and it has got a small graveyard, very small church, looks quite old though, we're just going to have a ramble round there now and see if we recognise it. Very small churchyard, we've got um, a William Watson who died 20th of August 1976, age 63, and there's Sidney Webb next to him, born the 20th of December 1884, died the 15th of December 1964, and Julia who died 1878, no, born 1878, died 1963, that was his wife. We've got George Richard Clements, born April 19th, 1899, died 1980, and Emma Clements, born 1908, died 1981. Yeah? Then we've got, um, Richard, uh, Joanna, wife of Richard John Barrett, that's with an I in it, We passed peacefully away May the 17th, 1905, age 17, and a Richard John Barrett who died May the 16th, 1913, age 73. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Got William C. Turner, who died November the 11th, 1931, age 55, and also his wife Annie Abigail, who died January the 28th, 1933, age 67. And there's some skeletons. There's Eliza Bridge, who died November the 22nd, 1895, age 68. And a Frederick Bridge, who died January the 8th, 1890, age 39. Oh, God. Oh, All right. I'm going to go in those bushes in a minute. Right, we've got, um, we found a mason. Sacred to the memory of John Mason of Wesley Hall, who died November the 14th, 1870, age 65, of the Mary Ann, widow of the above, who died January the 6th, 1902, age 82. This is a big monument. She's got, yes, uh, there is a Wesley Hall next door. Hold on, it's got a big pot on the top. In, it's also on this big, this is taller than me, this, this um, monument. Albert Edward Mason, who died January, I remember an Albert Edward, died January the 16th, 1930, age 66, and his wife Clarissa Martha, who died March the 12th, 1966, oh, same year as my mum, age 100 years, also oh, their daughter, Dorothy, who died, wife of John Madden, who died July the 26th, 1984, age 84. And on, this, on the other side, we've got a Henry Mason who died October the 2nd, 1897, age 53. Have I done that one? Um, I don't know. Oh, no, then. Also, this big stone has got writing all over it. It's John and Mary Ann Mason of Wesley Hall, who died June the 19th, 1860. Um, in the 19th year of her life, so she was quite young when she died, and that's a big stone, like I say, a big pot on it. That, um, Wesley Hall is next door. Yeah, Wesley Hall's next door, has been rebuilt over the original. We've got some crisps in here, back of this little chapel, it's got a little tiny lead spire, you know, and a little tiny cross, it looks like it's been probably built in two stages. Um, oh, there's a little grave here. There's probably had more graves in it. There's lots of hickety pickledyness going on here. Um, it's a footstone there. Looking inside. Yeah, it looks well kept. I don't know if we can get in to get any leaflets. Edward Bridges. Yeah, bridge, it might be an S. I think there might have been S. I think he died 1902. And Anne, his wife. 
There's an Edward Jennings, who died February the 27th, 1870, aged 34 years. Also John, his son, who died August the 7th, 1851, aged six months. Also William, his son, who died September the 12th, 1860, aged two. Also Elizabeth, his daughter, who died March the 7th, 1867, aged six years. And then something, William, his son, died July the 24th, 1860 something, aged 22, so they didn't live very long. James Plum, who departed this life November the 28th, 1870, aged 65. Also, Jemima, widow of James Plum, who died June the 16th, 1884. Cyril George Bridge, who died December 1899, aged, it looks like, 12 years. They did have big graves, some of these people, didn't they? And probably there was a lot more people in there. John Pearson, here in the corner, died December something, not very clear, and his wife Sarah. That's in this uh, Wesley, what's it called? Wesley Waterless. Yeah, there probably were quite a few people in here. It's not a very big community though, but it doesn't look like a very big village. It's like pebble dash some of the walls are lined with on them. And some restoration work's been done on the, one of the stained glass windows. Oh, we've got more bridge. This is a bridge area. We've got a big monument with two upright crosses on plinths. One's Richard Bridge, who died um, 1921, and Isabella Ellen, his wife, who died December 1925, and then Hannah Bridge, who died 16th of February 1937, aged 61, and her husband Frederick Bridge who died the 19th of March, 1955, aged 77. So Richard could have been the father of um, Frederick. I suppose there's one leaning up against the wall. Oh, we found some flax. They keep turning up. There's John Flack, who died June the 19th, 1887, aged 75. And Mary wife of the above, who died January the 2nd, 19-oh-something. Then next to that, we've got Jane Flack, died May the 2nd, 19, looks like 19-something-4. Oh, James Flack, that is, and his wife, Susan Elizabeth. There's Flack people. Very high grass, but they are cutting it down here. Got John somebody, Heath. John Heath, his wife Elizabeth. She died in 1885. Or he did. Oh yeah, John Heath and Elizabeth, coincidentally, it says here, died... December the 7th, 1883, aged 78 years. They both died together. And there's another bridge here. There's a bridge here as well. Can't read that one, though. But Edward Howlett, who died December the 12th, 1886, aged 75, and his wife, Eliza Louisa. Who died in 1894, 12th of August, aged 74. And there's a little one. Some of these are big. Um, Elizabeth, wife of William Stretton. Oh, I remember Stretton. Got a Stretton somewhere. Elizabeth, wife of William Stretton, who died February 1886, aged something seven, 67. And she did, Elizabeth, his wife, and William Stratton, husband of the above, died November uh, 
16, 18, I can't quite read it, 19, no, 1901, age 75. I've got an Alfred Ernest Firth, born March the 7th, 1865, died October the 16th, 1917. And another one next to that. Daughter of Ernest and Sarah Firth, Sylvia. She died 1892. No, she was born 1892, died 1906. This little church is open. So I've come in to have a look. It's got a bell. It's quite big inside, actually. Whosoever thou art that enterest his church, leave it with not kneeling down, saying a prayer to God for thyself and for those who minister and those who worship here. Oh, right. Men of the Great War, there was a gin, a grass, a Pearson, a plum, a precious a sergeant, two starlings, two webs. And there's in honour in honoured and grateful memory of R. G. Clements and J. H. F. Green, who gave their lives in the Second World War. Um, and there's a little plaque, a little brass plaque, which says, Here lies Giles Allington, the son of Richard Allington, Squire, which Giles died the 26th of April, 1592. And Susan Allington, late wife of Giles, um, who died 14th day, 1594. There's um, Ivy L.A. Steary, S-T-E-R-R-Y, who died December the 19th, 1961, age 68. She was the last head teacher of Wesley Waterless School, which was founded in 1873 and reached the end of the road, being closed on July the 4th, 1954. There's a whole list of... Um, Rectors of Wesley Waterless. So there was a Arthur Mason, MA, in 1885. One of those. There's some big tomb like structures at the back of the church near the bell tower. They're sort of held by big brass clasps against the wall. Obviously, old tomb covers, I should imagine. And you've got the font. Um, can't see any postcards or anything, no. Right, we've been around the church. I said hello to some very strange-looking locals um, who didn't respond at all. And we're, uh, and we're trapped in here. We don't know. Half a mile from the village itself, down a little road. Possibly some masons here. It was a James Mason that was built here, born here in the past. John Jacob, who died 1813, and Elizabeth, his wife, who died April 1870, age 92. Daniel Goer died 1808, age 50, and George Daniel Goer son who died um, 1836. This church at Wood Ditton's got a pebble dash effect all over it as well. Jeffrey Dorbito, who died February the 19th, 1800, age either 53 or 33. And a William, son of Jeffrey and Aunt Dorbito, who died November 1865, age I think it's 39, but big marble stone of an Edward Gent and his wife Susan. She died in 1891, age 67, and he died in 1902, age 82. She's just been cast aside. Starlin. Starlin seems to be quite a common name around this area. James Starlin, who passed away in 1950, age 43, and his wife Delise Pamela died 1988. So Stalin has cropped up. Burling and a small man. V. 
these are all newer, like in the 1940s. Daisy Lily Balls, wife of Philip Balls, who died in 1941, age 48, and he died in 1950, age 66. A Bailey, 1940, age 75, and his wife Sarah, who died when she was 85, in 1952. Frederick Charles Jennings, died 8th of March 1951, age 83. There's a few other Jennings. Jane Jennings, 1934, she died. John Wade, who died 1915, age 72, and his wife Selina Wade, who died 1927, age 81. Elizabeth Turner, who died 1952, age 78, and Henry James Turner, who died 1960, age 81. This is Wood Ditton, just to remind ourselves. Yeah, we've got some more gents, a whole row of gents. Yeah, this, the one that was scattered on the side, there's some more gents here. Lillian Bridge. Died 1957, age 48, and her husband Charles Edward, who died 1984, age 81, I think. Some Smiths, James and George. George died 1926, he was 92. And James died in 1925, and he was 69. And Elsie Briggs and George Briggs, it's just a little tiny flower pot stone. A couple of Hollands. William Parrott Clements, October the 27th, 1910, age 70. And Louisa, who died in 1910. Charles Jaggard, who died 23rd of December 1911, age 40. And Theresa Jaggard, who died 19... 79, age 70 something, 4, 74. Charles Turner, died 1952, age 35. Clara Turner, died 1950, age 69. And Peter Turner, who died 1969, age 82. We've got a, a Sarah Smoothie, who died in 1930, age 61. She's a wife and a mother of somebody. Henry Baldwin, who died June the 1st, 1901, age 60. John Chapman, who died March the 16th, 1905, age 48. Pledger, William Alfred Pledger, who died 1940, aged 26. He was probably in the war. And Starvis, S-T-A-R-V-I-S, William Starvis, died um, 1928, aged 73. Jagged, little tiny marble grave and a little angel on the top of wings some flowers. This is of um, sweet memories of our darling daughter, Tina Marie Jaggard, who died 21st of July 1961 in her third year. And her she's in with her nan, Nanette Jaggard, who died the 19th of March 2004, age 72. And there's a, another part of the book ready, obviously, for her grandfather. There's Winifred May Jaggard, died the 27th of July, 1949, age 54. And Percy Charles Jaggard, who died the 17th of March, 1965, age 75. Ethel May, they seem to be called Ethel May, these foolards, don't they? She died in 1953, age 54. Charles Webb, 25th of January, 1940-something, age 65. And cows, there's a few cows here. Four Jaggards, Dorothy and Arthur. She died in 1950, he died in um, 1987. A Clayden, William Clayden, 1950, age 58. And another, Robert William Willard, who died 9th of February 1953 in his 76th year. And his wife, Elizabeth, she died in 1960, aged 82. Oh, another section of the graveyard, which looks really new. Henry, son of Henry and Rebecca Spy, who died October the 5th, 1899, age 21. Turning up, Ada Elizabeth Swan, died 1959, age 65. Wife of Edward James Swan, who died 1969, age 81. You can get, I do it, sometimes we look at the newer graves because of the names, names being carried on, like there's a Jeffrey and there's a Bailey yes, and a Peachy, 
Peaches, who died in 1981, Baileys, who died in 96. So the names... Yeah, there's a Clayton as well, who died in 85. Another gent, Gerald Douglas, he died October 2003, age 91. And his wife, Beatrice Florence, who died November 1972, age 59. Scrivener, I've come across that once. There's another jackard over there as well. And a Tilbrook, who died in 1976. Gladys Mary Hazelwood died the 15th of March 1979, age 80, and her husband, James Thomas Hazelwood, who died the 5th of January 1982, age 85. Yeah, that's that might be from... Emily Boniface, who died 2nd of December 1979, age 91. Nordens, a plume. Williams, Browns, known as Tubby. Charles Aaron Willard died the 25th of August 1986, age 81, and his wife Winifred Willard. This Willard thing's getting serious. She was 88 when she died in 1996, and Stanley John, who died 26th of March 1989, he was 77. And there's an Edward George Brown, Ted, died 16th of October 1990, age 76. We haven't found any Masons, Oaks, or Brooks, though, or Pages, or anybody else. There's the old Holland turning up here all the time. A Frank Ashley Moore. Is that anything to do with us? An Oak married a Moore, a long time ago, but he's um, he died in 1990. Right, that's the end of that side of the tape which is ending at a convenient time anyway on this recording. This will continue on part two of this particular visit to Burwell, Wesley Waterless, and then Wood Ditton. So it will continue with Wood Ditton on the other side. Right, so it was all very exciting back there in 2005 when we were discovering different names, places, people, events. Right then, over and out for now. This is Sheila, January 2010, doing a re-recording of the original tape cassettes from 2005, which have now been digitalised and are on disc and DVD.